full and uncut versions available on Patreon. Check in the description below. Greetings once again, Pokemaniacs. Dudes, this been back again with more of the Pokemon Adventures manga, our journey into Johto with the gold, silver, and crystal arc, where previously, the character of Gold, who has lived his whole life with Pokemon, ends up encountering a young boy named Joey, who's running an errand between Professor Oak and Professor Elm. As Gold and Joey make their way to Professor Elm's laboratory, they encounter a young boy named Silver, who we know as a contact of Green back in Kanto, in the process of stealing a Totodile from Professor Elm. Despite Gold's best efforts, Silver is able to escape, with Gold blaming Silver for previously stealing Gold's backpack. Unbeknownst to him, this was done by Team Rocket. Gold has decided to take the hunt for Silver into his own hand, in the process encountering Professor Oak who is also looking for the young man. Despite Oak's misgivings about Gold, Gold manages to coax him into giving a, him a Pokédex, the same kind of Pokédex that Silver stole from Professor Oak as well. This kid's been on a tear. Gold has managed to track Silver to Sprout Tower, and yet another battle has ensued, with Gold having taken Cyntaquil, who is determined to get back Totodile as well. But with Totodile at the command of Silver and a type advantage on top of that, can Gold overcome this new rival? And, what is it that Silver is actually after? Join me as I find out, won't you? Once again confronting each other, Gold calls out, Not you, Silver. Not after chasing you all the way from New Barktown. Silver doesn't respond, as they both brandish their Cinequil and Totodile respectively. Oh, and because I can see the little gremlin in the background there, I gotta bring out one of my favorite... Gen 2 Pokemon, Sneasel. The rival character, especially in terms of this manga, always seemed to have my favorite Pokemon. And in chapter 98, Totodile Rock. Dance to the Totodile Rock. Totodile bites Senequil on the noggin. <laughs> it just, it's, it's kind of awkward as the two of them just watch this go down. Totodile then tosses Senequil in the air. Silver commands Totodile, scratch. And I think Cynical gets hit? Either that or it manages to dodge in midair. It's hard to tell. The arts got to look a little weird in this chapter. Gold commands Cynical, Expo, tackle. And Cynical does just that, ramming into Totodile, knocking it to the ground. Gold then shouts, now give back the Totodile you stole from Professor Elm. Silver takes a moment and then asks, why? <laughs> why? Gold says, huh. I guess if you'd give it back after being asked politely, you wouldn't have stolen it in the first place, huh? But, you know, I've got to get it back to fulfill my promise to the pro. So, one way or another, I'm just going to have to take it. And Gold rushes in. Gold commands Cynical to use Ember. And Silver commands Totodile to use Water Gun, which, I mean, type advantage. Ooh, putting out the flames on Cynical's back, causing it to stagger. Silver dismissively tells Gold, Totodile is a perfect match for Cynical because, in gold grabbing Cynical says, Water diffuses fire, I know, I know it. But I took into account Expo's feeling. How much Expo wants to bring Totodile home to the research center. That's gotta matter. Expo's just gotta keep fighting. Hmm, okay. Using the power of the heart to overcome a type advantage. And that's how the... <laughs> The anime and the manga work. When a Pokemon is able to just overcome what should be a debilitating weakness. Silver pauses and then checks his Pokegear saying, I don't doubt that Expo has strong feeling, but there are, you know, physical realities here. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> it's the politest way of being like, you stupid? And I get your feelings, but that, that ain't really the issue here. But Gold says the power of emotion isn't something you can find in textbooks, but it's real. And Cynical bursts to life yet again, much to Gold Silver shock. As he says, what? Cynical lights up and the smoke fills the area. Silver Starts to hack and cough, saying all the smoke filling up the room. Gold puts on his goggles, brandishing the Pokeball with Apom in it, saying, Just like I planned. B.S. As Gold tells Cynical to use Smoke Screen. Water strong against fire, fire strong against grass, and grass is strong against water. I've heard it all before. But if Expo wants to fight, then we have to win, no matter what. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> 
I thought Red was a shonen protagonist, but Gold is giving him a run for the money. Silver is blind as saying, <laughs> can't see. Gold says, thanks for telling me. Now, I've got to find that. And as he spots Totodile, he says, Totodile, come with us. You don't have to obey him anymore. You must have hated being with a thief like that. Let me take you back to Profess, and then Totodile bites him, which causes Gold to scream. He blows on his hand, saying, hey, 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 what's the big idea? Don't tell me you want to be with this creep instead of Elm. Silver says, fine, Totodile won't, te won't tell you. <laughs> hey, okay, see, finally Silver's starting to get a little bit snippy right on back. Gold says, huh? Silver says, I can see again, thanks, as Totodile leaps back to Silver's side, which, I mean... Hmm, it might just be the fact that Silver brandishes Totodile's Pokeball, or it just might be that Silver has actually managed to gain the little guy's trust. It's hard to say. As Cinequil is still just the maddest little guy over in the corner there, glaring at Silver. Silver says, that's one, that is one lame Pokemon. I mean, come on, a camouflage attack? And again, he's getting real snippy. <laughs> Man, okay, you start to feel a lot more like Blue back in the day. Gold says, you're wrong. While Silver just says, it's Elm's fault. That's why Totodile wants to stay with me. I'll teach Totodile how to use its power. I won't waste Totodile's time with silly tricks. Gold, lifting up his goggles, says, Totodile, is that true? With that perpetual grin of yours, I can't figure out what... Right? Totodile has just this doofy grin. Oh, but I love the little guy anyway. As the Gold says, eh? Is something rumbling? Only for Gold to notice almost too late that the walls are closing in with spikes all over them. As Gold says, ah, spikes from the walls. As both Gold and Silver do their best to dodge out of the way. But as Gold holds back the spikes, a giant iron ball drops down from above Gold. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Silver says, no time to dodge it. Catch it. Okay, y'all got Ash's strength. Because Ash be just, just pulling off these stupidly incredible feats of strength in the anime sometimes. And then they managed to catch what I thought was a giant iron ball. But that, I don't know, might be made out of paper mache or something. But as the two boys somehow managed to capture the log, large ball, Gull says, what's going on here anyway? Silver says, it's a mechanism in the Sprout Tower to test the trainees. That stupid smoke of yours must have triggered it. Okay, so, it's not stuff that's actually meant to kill, okay. Because otherwise, I also wondered how Gold was managing to stop the spikes from coming at him. I actually don't remember mechanisms and all that in Sprout Tower. I mean, I remember Sprout Tower, I remember battling in Sprout Tower, but I don't remember any traps, I just remember that it was a little confusing to get through. Yeah, I'm looking at a layout, yeah, there's, there's no traps the heck is going on here? Ah well, more of the mechanism starts to whirl and click. As Gold says, you're not gonna blame this on me. You're the one who smashed the stairs, so we don't have a way out. Oh right, I didn't realize that the stairs that they're on are destroyed from behind. Dang. Go Silver says, whatever, it's a Pokemon training exercise, right? So Totodile, save us. But Gold tells Cynical, Expo, what can you do? As both Cynical and Totodile make their way up to the top of the ball, they nod to each other. As Gold thinks, Expo is signaling to signaling Totodile? Huh, yeah, that's actually interesting. I actually love it when we give a bit of autonomy to the Pokemon. It shows that there might be more going on with Totodile than has been let on. Senequil unleashes a blast of fire from his back. As Gold says, Flame Expo's flame is back. But what what's that gonna do? Expo can't melt the ball without melting us first. Ow, ow, ow. As the ball starts to heat up, Silver thinks, I get it. Well, Gold shouts, oh, I get it. Keep it up, Expo. Don't mind us. Use your flame. While Silver says, that's it, Totodile. Build up your coal. Build it up. And ice punch. Oh. In order to shatter it because of the rapid change in temperature. And Totodile uses just that, shattering the massive, actually steel ball. Jabus. It explodes as Gold cheers, Expo, you did it! You knew that sudden change of temperature can crack solid metal. I can tell you two were raised by a scientist. <laughs> it looks like I owe you one, Toto. And, much to Gold's shock, he sees both Silver and Totodile gone. As he says, what? Gone? They got away! As we see a while away, Silver heading out with Totodile. And then Totodile starts to evolve. Silver pulls out his Pokedex, saying, we ran into a little trouble, but 
Mission accomplished. Totodile has evolved into Crocodile. Mission? So he just wanted to evolve Totodile into Crocodile? Huh. But what? We pick up in Chapter 99, Dunkern Treasure. We pick up in Goldenrod City. Oh, okay. Back in Kanto, where it seems that Bill is giving a lecture? Or, wait, no, Goldenrod is in Johto. Oh, okay, that's my bad. Goldenrod is in Johto, because that's where Whitney is. Okay, that, oh, oh god, Whitney. Ooh, boy, Whitney. Where it seems that Bill is giving a lecture, saying, All right, the next topic of discussion is review of the gym leader organization for both Johto and Kanto regions. So we pick up in the Johto Pokemon Society HQ. Bill tells the other researchers, It seems clear to me that we need to be a lot stricter with our requirements for the office of gym leader if i may demonstrate these are the gym leaders for vermilion city and saffron city as i'm sure some of you already know these two were suspected of having conspired with team rocket three years ago suspected they did they were leading it meanwhile the whereabouts of their fellow suspects the future and viridian city gym leaders remain unknown these gyms continue to be run without a leader wait still they should already have a leader now huh did something change must be something that happens later down the line or maybe that's what's being discussed here okay hmm I wonder. These gyms continue to be run without a leader. These people were su supposed to lend their abilities to bringing up the level of all the trainers in the region. Well, to make sure nothing like this happens in Johto, uh, another person says, excuse me, they were only suspected of cooperation with Team Rocket. There was no proof. Really? Despite multiple eyewitnesses. Wait. Hmm. Mm. After their help with the Elite Four, they might have been able to get that mm, swept under the rug. And in any case, Team Rocket has dissolved. And the new Vermilion and Saffron gym leaders are filling their duties admirably. Okay, so there are new members new gym leaders okay maybe it was just the phrasing in my view all we need to do is find new leaders for fuchsia and viridian oh wait the new vermilion saffron gym leaders are filling their duties admiral wait new vermilion and saffron gym leaders wait what hmm okay or unless they're supposed to be saying that newly appointed lieutenant surgeon Sabrina? Because they had left their duties? Hmm. Uh, whatever. The man says, instead of worrying about issues beyond your pur pur purview, I suggest that you focus on what you alone can do, restoring the Pokemon storage system. Am I right, Bill? He's essentially saying, stay in your lane, Bill. This guy was probably bought off. Meanwhile, we pick up with the gold leaving Sprout Tower, saying, man, those guys were tough. I love the monkey see monkey do that's done with A-bomb. And here we are, chasing him again. He then looks back to Cinequil, thinking, you know, I hate to admit it, but we don't click like they do. Maybe it's because I keep questioning whether I'm really doing the right thing? Hmm. He then asks Cinequil, hey, Expo, you want to stop trying to get tutted out? back so i really seem to want to be with that jerk i'm still sworn to bring that thief in but maybe this isn't your fight think about it expo if you stay with me you'll keep finding yourself in situations where you have to fight your old friend so the quilt seems to be thinking hard about this the gold says sorry i'm not trying to give you a headache or anything it's just you don't have to go through with this it'll still take you back to professor elm's place i actually like that he really is taking the time to be like what, what do you want to do here, man? This is getting complicated. Says, well, I don't need any answers anytime soon. Anyway, I'm beat. Let's both sleep on it, okay? As he and Apom lay down in the grass, suddenly there's a rush of wind all around him as he says, whoa, what's this wind? As a bunch of sungern just start flying all around him. Weird. I was never a big fan of these things. Cole says, what was that? He checks the Pokedex saying sunkern. They travel in packs? He lies back down saying, they know how to ruin a good nap anyway. As suddenly, oh, some bird Pokemon? A Pidgeot or Pidgeotto comes flying overhead as Gold says, yeah, another Pokemon now. Oh, I know who this is. As a figure in the distance says, Pidgeot, knocked owl, return. Gold says, w wait a minute, Falconer. Yep. Falconer says, eh, aren't you, wait, they've met before? Or Falconer. Gold says, you're... You, you're, I forget. And Faulkner's just like, w wait, what? Oh, wait, that was him? Gold says, I remember creating the composite picture of that thief. Yeah, you're that cop. Okay, I thought the cop looked a little bit odd to me. It was Faulkner? Wait, 
Since when is Faulkner a fed? Or a cop, I should say. Uh, huh. I, I'm actually really surprised to hear that. I mean, it's not uncommon for gym leaders to have other jobs and duties, but I didn't see that one coming. Gold says, I didn't recognize you without your uniform. What you doing out here anyway? Faulkner says, I guess I haven't introduced myself. Name's Faulkner. I'm off duty today. Came out to train. Gold says, whoa. I didn't know police did Pokemon training too. Faulkner says, this is purely my own dream. Gold questions dream. Faulkner asks, have you been to Violet City? Did you see the gym? My father was the gym leader there. Right now, he's in a situation where he's had to go into hiding. Oh, so far, no one's been able to replace him. I want to be the one to carry on my father's work. Wait, oh, you're you're not even the gym leader yet. Okay, huh. I mean, gym leader does sometimes become a family business. Faulkner sends his pitchy out flying, saying, That's why I keep training like this, so I can pass the Pokemon League's qualifying exam. That's my only goal. Well, says goal. Curse to me, that Silver isn't acting like he stole that Totodile just so he could sell it. Right? Gold thinks, he has got some bigger goal too. Has he got some bigger goal too? Suddenly, there's a loud sound that catches Faulkner's attention. He pushes Gold out of the way, saying, Gold, get down! As the wind whips around them, Gold says, it's that wind again. Faulkner says, this isn't just any wind. I've been investigating reports of a new kind of Pokemon rampaging in this area. A huge Pokemon with a body like steel. As we see Skarmory flying through the sky. I like Skarmory. Not my favorite, but... It's cool. That is a Skarmory, right? Yeah, Skarmory. Gold says, wait, that's the Sunkern again. As the herd of Sunkern come rushing towards them and then pass them. Faulkner says, they must be running away from that huge Pokemon. Gold says, which would explain why they keep running back and forth or bouncing, I mean. Faulkner commands his Pidgeot and knock. Night knocked owl saying let's go as they clash with the pokemon in the air gold seeing this says an aerial battle your pokemon are really pressing that thing Faulkner says but they can't deal the deciding blow we fought against that pokemon once before that metal shell defied us but and then skarmory manages to nail a shot in on pidgeot Faulkner calls out pidgeot keep back but gold says but it's gotta have a weak spot right Faulkner says you'd think but what weaken weakens metal Magnetism, rust, intense heat. Gold says heat. Sounds like sounds to me like a job for Expo. As he turns to a Cinequil. Gold then looks around saying, but not even a jump shoot with a pool cue would get you way up there. He then spots a bouncing sun current. Tells his Apom, Ape, Abo, grab it. And he catches the sun current. Gold turns to his newly caught sun current saying, you want to help me stop that Pokemon? Sun current Gets all riled up, saying, oh, can't wait to get it. Get him, eh? You're a Pokemon after my own heart, Sunkern. So let's go. He unleashes Sunkern, and then recalls Senequil. Faulkner asks, what are you planning, Gold? Gold says, just you watch. I'm counting on you. Taking advantage of that jumping skill, he places Senequil's Pokeball on Sunkern's head, and Sunkern springs up high into the sky. Faulkner says, a delivery method for Senequil? And as they get close, Gold shouts, Expo now, and Senequil is released from his Pokeball, and unleashes a torrent of flame on Skarmory, the gold saying, you wanted heat? The Skarmory starts to fall from the hit. Faulkner says, you did it. Now leave the rest to me. As he manages to catch Skarmory. Right then, right there. Noise teamwork makes the dream work. As gold says, got it. Faulkner says, thank you. That was quick thinking, gold. Gold says, nothing special for me. Huh. Gem of modesty, this guy. Faulkner looks to his knocked owl and Pidgeot saying, Obviously, I have a lot more training to do. We can do it together, can't we, team? Gold looks to Senequil saying, together, huh? What do you think, Expo? Maybe getting total about our back just means more training together. You want to try it again? Together? Senequil gives a nod. While Faulkner says, hey, Gold, do you want to train with me a while? Gold questions, train? Faulkner tells him, yeah. You have a great instinct for battle. I'll help you hone it. Gold think, says to himself, it probably would be great to get stronger. Except, I got a couple of jobs to finish that can't wait. For now, I've got to keep moving. Yeah, okay, I like, see, though he's exceedingly cocky, I love the very decisive nature of him. It's just like he sticks to what he believes in. Faulkner gives a smile saying, yeah, I know all about missions that can't wait. It's up to you whether you succeed or fail. Give it 
all you've got. Gold gives a thumbs up, saying, you too. See you again, Faulkner. He takes out, uh, Gold takes off brandishing his Pokedex, which catches the attention of Bill, who says, is that a Pokedex? Anyway, I can't be dawdling. I've got to find this guy Faulkner and let him know the date for the qualifying exam has been set as Bill brandishes a gym leader qualifying exam envelope. Meanwhile, Professor Elm's assistant is at a Pokemon Center saying, at the computer saying, Hello, Professor Elm. I've arrived in Violet City, but I can't find any sign of gold. Elm says, I see. He hasn't come up on the Poke Gear either. If only the story system were back up. The assistant says, Uh, Professor, I know it's a bit late to bring this up, but... Why do you want to give such an important item to a reckless kid like that? Elm says, well, the best way to hatch it is to be near high energy Pokemon. And since it wasn't reacting here at the center, who's that a silhouette of? Red? The assistant says, you thought Gold and his crazy Pokemon might do it. His crazy Pokemon. The assistant brings out the Pokemon egg for Togepi. At least I think it is. As Elm says, in any case, I want you to give him that mystery egg. The plot, she thickens. Like the booty. We then cut to gold outside camping and cooking up the stew saying, Ooh, ooh, looks good. Let's see. He sips it a little saying, hmm, not there quite yet. Expo, could you turn up the heat a little? And Expo gets a little too explosive with his flames, utterly frying the dish. As we cut to chapter 100, nice. Into the unknown, which is such a common thing to say, but ah, uh, what can you do? Gold checks his pokey gear, saying, "Looks like you still need to work on that finesse." Whatever, we still gotta find Polybo. Where are we anyway? Eddie checks his map. Love how it's readout is essentially like the game. Checking his pokey gear, he says, "Ruins, huh?" I might explain all those these piles of rock. Yeah, into the unknown can only mean one thing. He then spots a young Bugsy bug catcher looking around. And Gold says, huh? Yeah, she's cute, buddy. <laughs> uh, uh, he'll find out. Gold rolls up on Bugsy, who's checking on his cocoon and metapod, as Gold says, well, hello, miss. Must be boring touring these ruins alone. You wanna go get some tea or something? So <laughs> God. He's one of those. Bugsy hesitates a moment as Gold says, Oh, the name's Gold. I'm from New Bark Town. And Bugsy says, I'm Bugsy from Azalea Town. And you do know, don't you, that I'm a guy? And Gold is taken aback, saying, Duh, of course I knew. Oh, God. Bugsy tells him, And one more thing. One more thing. I'm not turning the ruins. I'm looking for my friends who've gone missing. Gold says, Questions, your friends are missing? Bugsy tells him, We're... All in these this ruin exploration club. They were poking around here yesterday when suddenly all communication stopped. Bugsy asks, Why are you here? Gold explains, Well, it's one of my Pokemon. It's gone missing and I'm trying to track it down. Bugsy questions, Missing? Maybe it was captured by whoever kidnapped my friend. Gold says, Actually, I don't even really even know when or where po Polybo went missing. Bugsy asks, really? Gold says, sounds like what I've heard about the fishing hole. What? Hmm. Apom then goes running off, hearing something. Gold notices, saying, huh? What's up, Abo? You hear something from inside there? Voices. And then places Senequil next to the tomb, saying, okay, Expo. But Bugsy says, wait, no, no, wait. <laughs> Gold tells Senequil, blast it down. And Senequil unleashes a torrent of flames on the rock formation. Bugsy tells him, no, that's a cultural treasure. Stop it. But Gold tells him, and if those voices are your missing friends, wouldn't you? And as Senequil does his duty, Gold says, hey, it's crumbling. And Gold jumps in through the opening saying, let's go. Bugsy follows saying, this just isn't right. Gold entering inside says, where? Wait till my eyes are just in, huh? He sees, he and Bugsy see patterns all across the walls. Gold Think, saying, what's that? This is some kind of code? Bugsy says, my goodness, I never imagined I'd find this. As he flips through a book, Gold says, hey, hey, they're talking to me instead of yours. Try talking to me instead of yourself. Bugsy explains, this structure has stood here for over 1,500 years. There is a theory that the mysterious symbol Pokemon once lived here, but no one's found any proof until now. Gold questions, symbol Pokemon? Bugsy tells him, if we can decode these characters, 
We may find they tell us all about those ancient creatures. Bill says, wow, so this was written 1500 years ago? Bugsy says, some legends say that humans and Pokemon lived together even then. To see evidence of those legends with my own eyes. The goal says, you know, this is really exciting, but weren't you trying to find your friends? <laughs> it's, it's always weird when Gold's the one staying on task. Bugsy in Paris says, oh, r right, sorry. <laughs> Gold points in the distance saying, the hall keeps going deeper in. The voices probably came from in there. But suddenly, String is sent out, tying up both Gold and Bugsy. Gold saying, hey, wh what? And two, three very familiar looking figures say, Thanks so much for smashing open the secret chamber. Gold questions, who are you? And the members of Team Rocket say, he thought the only way in was solving this puzzle in the stones. Oh god, that's right. Ugh, the puzzle. Now, but now we can just walk in and grab those symbol Pokemon. Oh, they got a giraffe egg. Bugs says, Team Rocket, but they said you were destroyed. Gold says, Expo, get him. But Cynical is already tied up. The Rocket member saying, sorry, Cynical is too constricted to, to ignite. And then send in their Elekid. With the Rocket grunt saying, now we collect the Pokemon essential to resurrecting our organization and you get to watch. As Elekid holds up an electrified fist towards Gold, Gold seems to weaken at the thought saying, okay, okay, I guess you're right. There's nothing we can do. But no one is noticing Apom's free tail grabbing one of Gold's Pokeballs with Sunkern inside. As Gold says, accept this. And Apom unleashes Sunkern with Gold saying, Sunbow, flash. The burst of light from Sunkern blinds the Team Rocket members who say, ah, oh, my eyes. But thanks to Apom putting on Gold's goggles, which again, love that those goggles come so in handy. Gold says, meet Sunbow, the Sunkern, my new best friend. Gold then goes and unties Bugsy as he says, Sunbow looks extra bright if you've been in the dark a while. But suddenly, the symbols on the wall start moving. Gold says, huh? The, the symbols? They're, they're... He then examines it with his Pokedex, saying, and it brings up information on unknown. Gold says, unknown? Bugsy, it looks like both the, you and the bad guys got it wrong. Those letters aren't about the symbol Pokemon. They are the symbol Pokemon. As suddenly, the unknown fly all over the place. Bugsy says the Flash must have woken them up. And Gold tells Bugsy, I think we ought to run. And they dash away from the unknown. As the Team Rocket members still try to wipe their eyes. They say spots in front of my eyes. Little creep didn't have to make it so bright. So we've learned something vital today. Now we know exactly what we're supposed to be hunting for. And now we get to turn the tables. Because now we also know the precise layout of this ruin. We can set a trap. Take down those stupid kids. And capture the symbol Pokemon. <laughs> As we see uh, Finorak at the ready to tie him up again. As Gold and Bugsy have made their way. Gold says, we lost him, but now we don't know which way is out. We've got a, huh? Do you hear something from behind that wall? As Bugsy listens in, he hears a call out. Help, please. Bugsy says, could it be? It is, my missing friend. Gold says, we just gotta get him out of there. And as they round the corner, they see a massive web. Bugs Gold says, a web? Bugsy examines it, saying, it's Spinarak's web, spider web, but different from the thread they used before, stickier. It's bug type Pokemon specialist, I know. We've got to do a di go a different way. But as Bugsy looks around, he sees that the path is blocked by multiple webs. He says, wait, it's here too? And behind us now, we're trapped. A voice calls out, there is no way out. Your only hope is to surrender. The rocket grunts call out from a ways away. Bugs Gold says, footsteps, they're coming for us, Bugsy. Bugsy says, and I hear the unknown coming from the other way. What can we do? And the rocket members say, <laughs> when the simple Pokemon come after them, all we gotta do is block the exit and we've got everybody. But suddenly, they're blinded by smoke, saying, what's all this smoke? They then see the unknown trapped in a web, saying, what? The Pokemon are in the web. And where are those kids? But suddenly, the members of Rocket are hit by a massive electrical attack. They slump over, saying, wait, we're not the ones who broke into your... Oh, they were attacked by the unknown, I didn't realize. The unknown then go back to their place in the walls. Gold saying, yes, it worked. Thanks to Expo's smoke screen, the unknown got caught and we stayed hidden. Now I'd like to be the first to tell our host. Sorry we interrupted your nap. We then see the various researchers making their way out of the tomb. This bug says, okay, that's everyone. Thanks, Gold. I couldn't have saved them without you. Gold says, no sweat. And we found the unknown, an epic discovery. Bugsy says, that must have been their ancient attack, the hidden power. Oh, yeah, that's a good attack. We still don't know its exact nature, 
but our study of them has just begun. What was once just a ruin can become a place of study of as Bugsy is just going through his notes. The gold says, oh, okay, Bugsy, I get it, I get it. Now I'm back to get back on my to my mission. So I'll see ya. He takes off on a skateboard. Bugsy saying, Take care, Gold. Gold saying, You too. Meanwhile, in the ruins, the rocket members say, Here's the hint. A Pokemon crawling on the floor of the ancient ocean. Wait a minute, did we already do this one? Forget the stupid puzzle. It's gonna take forever. Not as long as it'll take to dig our way through all that rock. Suddenly, there's a transmission saying, huh? A transmission? The voice calls out, you screwed up again? The rocket members say, uh, boss. The boss says, did I make a mistake gathering you clowns back together? Well, the members say, N no, sir. We're honored to have you as our new leader. The new leader says, so try being worthy of me. Got it. Ooh. Alright, we pick up in chapter 101, Teddy Ursa's Picnic. Uh-oh. Gold is traveling down Route 32, saying, Bugsy said it was around here. Place where Pokemon keep going missing. Fishing hole. Guess I'd better ask, not that there are many people around. He asks a fisherman who says a Pokeball with a polywag in it? Another victim of the Pokemon Snatcher, huh? Gold says, then he's here. Where can I find this creep? Fisherman says, don't know. He's too quick. He snags him as soon as you catch him. Nobody's gotten a good look at him. Gold thinks to himself, could it be Team Rocket again? Are they using Poliwag for some evil plot? The fisherman tells him, you gotta be alert. That's why I'm hanging on to my... <clears throat> he holds up a Pokeball and it's immediately gone. The fisherman says, my artillery! Gold brandishes his cue stick saying he's fast alright, but not fast enough. He launches a Pokeball towards the thief, much to the amazement of the fisherman. Oh, it's a snubble? Or is it a gramble? Gramble. Yep, gramble. The Pokeball hits the Granbull who has the artillery in his mouth in the Pokeball. With Gold saying, huh? The Pokemon thief is a Pokemon? The Granbull hits the water and is kind of incapacitated. Gold rushes over saying you, but immediately the Granbull hawks up the artillery Pokeball. With Gold saying, what the? As they talk to the Granbull, the fisherman says, you mean, its jaw got stuck open, so it was stealing Pokemon to get attention and find somebody who'd help. Gold says, and the Pokeball hitting it fixed the whole problem. It's in the Pokemon. Dex is named Granbull. I guess it's hard to just to walk up to people and ask for help with a scary mug like that. Okay, I'll take you to the Pokemon Center to get that jaw looked at. But first, give back all the Pokemon you stole, says the fisherman. And Granbull just unleashes a cascade of all of these Pokeballs. Gold saying that's a ton. But inside, he notices a familiar face in one of them. As he opens it up and gets his polywag, he says, Palibo, it's really you. The river carried you all the way here. You must have been so scared. Man, what luck. The fisherman says, I'm happy for you, kid. Hey, Gold says, thanks. Now I gotta get back to... The fisherman says, hang on, kid. Here's my phone number. Oh, the exchange of the phone numbers. I forgot about that. Which is funny because in Japan, if I'm correct, you can just hold your phones like close to each other and it'll automatically transfer it, which is kind of cool. I think we have stuff like that nowadays, even in America. I guess it would be like QR codes and stuff like that. Fisherman says, let's stay in touch. We can talk Pokemon sometime. Gold laughs to himself saying, you serious? I mean, we just met. The fisherman tells him, what? You don't like making new friends? I mean, dude, something about an adult saying that to a little kid is kind of weird. Gold says, that's not, it's not that. I'm just in a hurry. See ya. He takes off. Fisherman saying, yeah, sure. He then thinks to himself, he handles Pokeballs almost as well as Yellow does. Oh, he knows Yellow. How does he know Yellow? Is he from Kanto originally? Hmm. Something tells me I should talk to Yellow about this. Ooh, it'll be good to see her again. Gold is marching down the route, saying, I wonder what that was all about. Huh? What's wrong, Palibo? Yeah, Poliwag seems to be acting a bit weird. Gold says, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Meet Expo. And this here is Sunbo. They're cool. So you've got nothing to worry about. Oh, he's shy. And this is Polibo. Polibo's still a little. So look after Polibo, okay? One calls to Joey later. Joey so says, really? That's great. I can't believe you found Polibo. Gold says, yeah, could you say hi to my mom too? You really should just contact your mom yourself, you little... Oh, whatever. I'm not one to talk. Joey says, sure, but what are you going to do with Polibo? Gold says, oh, yeah. The transfer system's down in all of Johto, huh? I guess I'll have to talk to Polibo, take Polibo with me. I wish they get that system back up. Which is wild, to have the transfer system down the way it is. Is it still the result of Bill being attacked by the Elite Four? Huh. Suddenly, Professor Elm's assistant comes out of the brush saying, no kidding. 
if I could have just done a transfer. Gold is shocked, and Joey asks, what is it? The assistant says, are you calling Professor Elm? Can you put him on? Gold the questions, who the heck are you? Elm takes the phone from Joey saying, hello, Gold? That's my assistant. I'm so glad you two f were finally able to meet. Gold, I want you to keep Expo to help you recover Totodile. I mean, you didn't really have a choice in this matter, buddy. In exchange, can you do me a favor? I want you to take something with you. This Pokemon egg. Cold questions, a Pokemon egg? Elm says, well, we're assuming it's from a Pokemon at any rate, but we've never seen one in an egg state before. Which, huh, only newborn or new hat. That's so weird, the thought of that, never seeing that before. Really does show how early days this is in the Pokemon research. You can almost say that the way that's paved by the protagonists of each game is what allows things to go smoother for other characters and other universes. So you can see this is a monumental discovery. If we can establish that this is a genuine Pokemon egg and learn about the creature who laid it, will vastly increase our understanding of, Gold says, wait a second, if you want to learn so much about this egg, why are you giving it to me? And Elm just simply tells him, because I can't get it to hatch. So my theory is this, eggs need active Pokemon energy to hatch. I want you to hatch that egg by keeping it near your Pokemon, which <sighs> I have nothing against hatching eggs. It just ain't my bag though. It's just the moment it hatches, it's like, yep, and you're out of here. Unless I can get it up to a good level, it depends. I remember in um, Sword and Shield, getting that Toxtricity. Oh no, but I got it as a baby though, not as an egg. Huh. Eh, even still, it does depend on the Pokemon. Oh hey, Kurt, cut over to Azalea Town, where we see Kurt hard at work creating a Pokeball. He says, by the way, what are you planning on doing with this Pokeball you're having me make? Some special Pokemon you're after? And Kurt has a shuckle on his shoulder, and is that Kurt's, but is she granddaughter or niece? Maisie. Granddaughter, there we go, okay. Vaguely remember her. Mostly from the anime, she looks more familiar from the anime. But we see also that Silver is visiting Kurt. Silver shakes his head, saying, Powerful Pokemon are the only ones I really want. Kurt says, <laughs> Such intensity you have. Well, I don't care. As long as I know the great Pokeballs I forge go to trainers who truly know how to use them. Yeah, they're made from like seeds or something, right? That's so weird. There, the Pokeball made from the apricorn you brought. And gold, and Kurt hands over the Pokeball. Silver picks up the famous heavy ball. Meanwhile, cut back to gold, who is still wandering around, wobbling, using his key stick to prop him up, saying, so hungry. Ran out of money from all that takeout I ate. Yeah, that can be a problem. And that's why you go into Pokemon battles, get some money. Gold then notices in a tree, saying, fruit, and not just fruit, free fruit. He bites down, saying, chow time. And, uh, it's not very good. He spits it out, vehemently. Maisie, Kurt's granddaughter, says, You're funny, mister. That's apricorn fruit. I've never seen anybody try to eat that before. She hands over some rice balls, saying, Here you go. Colt says, Rice balls, thanks. I owe you one, little girl. Maisie says, You and your Pokemon, tee hee. Yeah, they're all chowing down. Maisie explains, My grandpa makes Pokeballs from those apricorns. He makes a whole bunch of different kinds, too. The various different kinds of Pokeballs will always be one of the greatest things they introduce. Such a fun concept. Gold says, Whoa, whoa, whoa. He makes Pokeballs out of fruit? Maisie says, Uh-huh. I want Pokemon to like me, so I asked him to make me a friend ball. Oh, yeah, the friend ball. But he says he only makes Pokeballs for people who can really use them. Gold says, Pokeballs made out of fruit, huh? I'd love to see what kind of trashy Pokeballs those are. Oh, dude. And then a figure moves in behind him, and it's Kurt, who says, What are you calling trashy, boy? Gold says, What? what? Who? Kurt says, My name is Kurt. And Maisie says, Remember the grandpa I was telling you about? Like, seriously. Kurt explains, Listen, boy. There was a day when all great trainers dreamed of using Pokeballs made by our family. These trinkets they mass produce in factories are only good enough for beginner, a talentless trainer like you. Let's go, girl. <laughs> That's right. Put him in his play skirt. First Pokeballs are the shit. Gold gets angry saying, hey, you want to talk smack? You better see what I got first. You're the one who was talking smack without seeing what he had. Try me. I'll master that Pokeball of yours in no time. Kurt turns saying, hmm, you do have spirit. And if you can't master it, Gold says, then I'll work as your assistant for the rest of my life. Do oh, Gold, buddy. Kurt says, those are big words. 
All right, then, I'll make one just for you. Choose the type of Pokeball you want and bring me an Apricorn. Cole gets angry, saying, what? I have to supply the materials? Curse is better to get it before the sun set. And thus, later, Gold has a friend ball. Actually made out of green apricorn. Guess this isn't a joke after all. Weird. Maisie says, why do you decide on a friend ball? Gold flicks around the friend ball on his finger, saying, they're supposed to like you if you catch them with this, right? I'm gonna give one to you. Maisie says, really? Oh, thank you so much. Gold says, it's all good. So which Pokemon do you want? Oh. I, I didn't even dawn on me that he was doing this for Maisie. Maisie says, uh, it lives up there, but remember said not to get close to it. I don't remember what Pokemon she... Did she have a Pokemon? Huh. Gold says, I'll be with you, so you're fine. Let's go. Maisie says, uh, okay. And they head up the mountain. With Maisie almost tripping, like, you shouldn't have brought her on this little excursion, buddy. It's bad enough that you got, like, 11-year-old out here doing all this, but how old is Maisie? Like, friggin' six? She almost slips down the mountain, close and close. You better be careful. You don't like things the- Maisie says, you don't like things the easy way, do you? Oh, they're looking for Teddy Ursa. Oh, wait, hey, it wasn't titled at the chapter, never mind. Gold says, tell me more about this Teddy Ursa. Maisie says, well, it's little and round and cute. Gold says, it better be worth all this. Maisie then spots it moving around in the mountains. He whispers over to Gold saying, there it is. That's Teddy Ursa. Gold gets out the friendship ball saying, okay, here it goes. Be very quiet. As he moves in behind the Teddy Ursa. A shadow looms behind him. It's an Ursa ring, looming over gold. Gold shouts, saying, what? Maisie says, Te Ursa ring, Teddy Ursa's evolved form. Gold grabs Maisie, shouting, run, managing to dodge Ursa ring's attack. As he runs, he says, you didn't tell me about the evolved form. Ah, time out, time out. But suddenly, a figure moves in, saying, Move, you're blocking my capture. It's silver with a heavy b Oh, that makes a lot of sense. This is a big one. Well, it's silver. Well, silver just glares at him saying, you again. Noticing the heavy ball in silver's hand, Gold says, hey, that's Grandpa's Pokeball. Stealing again, eh? But Maisie tells him, no, Grandpa gave it to him because he's so good. Dang. Gold is peeved saying, you mean this guy who made fun of me gave that chump a free Pokeball? What a joke. And you're going to catch Ursaring. That'll take real skill. Gold smirks, pointing to the Ursaring, saying, forget Terry Ursa. I'm bringing in Ursaring. He sends in his po a palm, who starts scratching at Ursaring. Silver says, you're trying to poach it off of me? Gold sneers at Silver, saying, poaching? Well, Pokemon is anybody's catch. Oh, God, this feels like a familiar situation. It's the Nine Tails all over again. Silver sends in his Sneasel and Croconaw. Ursaring gets pissed and flails his hand, one of the hits coming towards Maisie. But Silver manages to scoop her up, dodging out of the attack. He thinks to himself, quick for a bruiser. Silver thinks to himself, wild attack, amateurish as always. <laughs> oh, jeez. Suddenly, Ursaring is rushing down gold. Gold manages to get out of the way of the, the Teddy Ursa, but his ankle twists. Ooh, that's not good. Gold winces in pain, thinking, my ankle, I twisted it. He crouches down on his ankle in pain as Teddy Ursa and Ursa ring loom. Maisie calling, uh, mister? In chapter 102, Ursa ring major. Nice. As Ursa ring goes for the attack, Gold shields Maisie, saying, no. Little girl, run, only for Sneasel to move in. Oh, using an ice attack to freeze Ursa Ring's paws. Silver says, that's what happens when you poach. Gold, angry, says, you, you, you. Ah, but Ursa Ring starts to melt his frozen paws. Silver says, melting it with fire punch, hmm? But Gold then thinks, was he protecting the little girl? Meanwhile, Apalm is going up against Teddy Ursa. Gold saying, don't let the cute face fool you. I'll take care of Teddy Ursa first. He throws the friendship bowl and it just bounces right off of Teddy Ursa's head. See, gotta love the fact that he could just pick that right back on up. I think you need something special in order to be able to do that in the uh, games. Gold picks up the friendship bowl saying, well, what's going on? I'm sure it made contact. One more time. And Teddy Ursa just bats it away. Cole says, again? I knew he made trashy Pokeballs. Silver tells him, don't blame this on someone else. Gold turns to him saying, what did you say? Silver tells him, your inability to use the Pokeball shows your lack of skill. Gold brandishes the heavy ball saying, there's a trick to using a Pokeball this subtle. Sorry, I'm taking Ursa Ring. Which, 
There's no trick, just throw the damn ball. Suddenly, there's a ring tosses Atom into Silver, which causes him to drop his heavy ball. Silver turns angrily to Gold. Man, he's so pissed. Silver pan and with Gold panicking, saying, that was an accident. But as well, Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring bear down on him, I love how Ursa Ring just has this blank look to his face as he just slams his head into the ground. Gold says, run, as they dash out of the way. Now they're back down to a cliff. Gold saying, no. It's a cliff. Gold's ankle throbs. As Maisie says, Gold he begins to tear up, saying, Grandpa told me it was too dangerous in the mountains. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I realize he's gonna die, and it's all my fault, she cries. Gold pats her on the head, saying, Easy, kid. It's not time to give up yet. I'll catch Teddy Erson. I'll get you home safely. Trust me. He gives her a wink. He stops crying. Gold says, Okay, this friend ball's all we've got. I'll have to do. He picks up the friendship balls and says, Silver, you said there was a trick to these Pokeballs. You better tell me what it is. I don't like asking you. I don't see as I have any choice. Silver doesn't respond. While Gold simply says, Okay. Teddy Air sent Ursa and Kati to move in. While Silver says, Fine. It's all about hitting the energy point. Bull. Every living thing has a spot in which its life force is concentrated. Only when you hit that spot will these Pokeballs reveal their true powers. Bull! I just tossed the damn thing! And the energy points for these two are Ursa Ring, the center of his chest, its circle, hit its obvious weak point for maximum damage, Teddy Ursa, the crescent on its head. Gold gets his cue stick ready, as well as the friendship ball, and takes aim, saying, Okay, I got this in the bag. I don't have the heavy ball anymore. Silver says, I don't have the heavy ball anymore. Which one will you target with that one? Gold says, how about neither? Watch this. And he fires off the friendship ball. And it, you know, ricochets all around Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring into the heavy ball, landing it in Silver's hands and the friendship ball back in Gold's hands. Silver says, what? Well, Gold says, nice catch. Now let's get him. They both touch, toss their ball. Silver get, managing to get Ursa Ring in his heavy ball, while Gold gets Teddy Ursa in his friendship ball. Maisie shouts, both of them! Gold says, now Silver, and to call us even. While Silver says, listen Gold, this is my last warning. Stay out of my way from now on. And he takes off. Gold saying, hey, I just don't get that guy. Maisie goes over to the captured Teddy Ursa, while Gold picks up the ball saying, here's your Teddy Ursa. He brings out Teddy Ursa saying, I think you two will get along great. Maisie says, will you be my friend? And Teddy Ursa smiles. While Gold says, nah, let's get off this mountain. Dang. Hmm. Oh no. When you look at it from that angle, it feels very overly manipulative. An item that just immediately causes the Pokemon to warm up to you. Oh, the Slowpoke well. Oh, we see several Slowpoke without their tails. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. The members of Team Rocket say, well, that was a good catch. There's a good market for sweet slowpoke tails. This is some big money. Enter Silver with his newly acquired Ursa Ring, bearing down on the members of Team Rocket, who turn saying, Who are you? And Silver, he just smiles. It's rocket hunting season. Meanwhile, as Gold and Maisie make their way down the mountain, Gold says, It's already dark. Well, Maisie says, Grandpa's going to be worried. We gotta hurry. Gold says, well, we got you home. Maisie says, I better run and tell him. She calls out, Grandpa, Grandpa. Grandpa's not here. And no water? Maybe something happened at the well. Cut to Kurt over by the well, seeing the detailed slowpoke and tied up members of Team Rocket. Meanwhile, Maisie runs over, saying, Grandpa, showing off the Teddy Ursa. Kurt is angry, saying, Bad girl. How many times have I told you to stay off that mountain? Maisie says, I'm, I'm sorry. But Kurt pats her on the head, saying, well... It's all right. Just glad you're safe. You're going to take good care of your new Pokemon, aren't you? Pokemon have scary sides, but if you treat them well, they're very loyal. Enter Gold. He says, did you pile up the Team Rocket thugs? Kurt tells him, no. They were like the, that when I got here. Suddenly, there's a rustling. Gold turns at the ray saying, who's there? It's Bugsy saying, it's me, Bugsy. Gold says, Bugsy? Bugsy walks forward saying, I've been following reports of Team Rocket sightings in the Azalea Town area. I didn't expect this. See, this is the way I'm more used to most gym leaders being depicted. They're not just gym leaders a lot of the time. They're kind of like a security force. Anybody coming in with Pokemon causing any kind of mischief or any harm to the area, 
the gym local gym leader is who you call in when there's a challenge too tough there's duffets in the land or in the city bugsy turns to gold questioning did you do this gold says wasn't me and bugsy questions then who noticing the claw marks on the well Maisie goes over to the down slowpoke saying poor slowpoke ain't their tails cut off maybe that's what happened to the well gold brings out his pokedex saying that's right there's a legend around these parts the yawn of a slowpoke will call forth water let's test that test it out abo and a pump Duck slowpoke in the face. He says, Gold, what are you doing? Well, Gold says, the best way I know, to get a slowpoke to yawn. He causes the slowpoke to exert itself, as Gold says, is to wear it out in battle. And the yawn brings fresh forth a rush of water from the well. Gold says, and it uses yawn to heal. As Gold takes off, waving to Maisie, Bugsy, and Kurt, he thinks to himself, that was an Ursa Ring claw mark. So was it Silver who beat up Team Rocket? That would mean he knew their movements before Bugsy. Is that why he wanted that heavy ball? To stop this Team Rocket group? He's definitely following some plan. What is it? Sully, I don't want to catch him. I just want to find out who he really is, right? I do love the encounters you have with Silver, even in the game. Just comes in and starts wrecking dudes. Much in the same way as Blue. But I love the distinction that you've made with the two characters in terms of the manga. And now we enter into the final chapter of today. We pick up with a young trainer boy who... I'm not sure who this is. He's having his far fetch shoes cut. Which, oh, was this around where you used that and I encountered the pseudo wudo? Huh. The young boy says, Great job, Farfetch. I'll be able to make lots of charcoal real soon. Farfetch is just styling. Oh god, this would totally turn into a surfetch. Suddenly, mist starts moving in. The young man says, The mist again. It comes in so often these days. Better get home before. He looks around. Is Farfetch gone? Saying, What? What? Farfetch? The stupid thing flew off again. Just when I praised it. Come on, Farfetch. But a voice calls out, Leave this for it. In chapter 103, You ain't nothing but a hound doer, riding on the side. You ain't never caught a low pony, you ain't no friend of mine. The young man turns saying, What's that? A voice from the forest? The voice calls out again, Leave this forest. And a mo young man shrieks into the night. Oh, Elix Forest. Huh. Elix Forest. That's not the forest where you'd encountered, uh, like Knocked Owl or something. Oh, that's the one where Celebi Shrine is. Okay. Gold now stands at the entrance of Elix Forest. Thing. This is the Elix Forest. Looks like Silver's heading us, leading us right through it. How are you tracking Silver? Honestly, man, it's, is that creepy looking? Okay, straight through, nothing to fear. Straight through this forest and we'll find Silver. Can't let him just vanish without thanking me, <laughs> really. How insulting. I'm gonna find out who he is and, huh? No, it can't mean. He looks to his Poke gear and finds that there's no data. He looks to his Pokemon saying, but what do you know? No map. Hell of his Pokemon are aghast, stare daggers at him as he says, Guess we better just keep going straight. Yeah, you get lost easily in Elix Forest, right? Cole thinks to himself, I've never known that thing to lose reception. Can't help feeling there's something weird about this forest, right? Suddenly, Gold trips over something, and he sees the down Farfetch. His Pokemon then trip over something, and it's the down kid from before. <laughs> That's morbidly funny. Cole says, a person. Hey, what's wrong? You okay? I guess not. Gold and his Pokemon heft up the young man and the Farfetch as they race through the forest. Gold says, how do we get out of here? It's a lousy time to get lost. Those wounds are bothering me. What kind of battle was it? Was it in? This leak stalk is its weapon and it's crushed. He thinks to himself, his opponent must have had sharp teeth or a knife. Suddenly, a cold chill runs down Gold's back. He looks around saying, how come I just got a really creepy feeling? Forget it. Just... Get out of this forest quick. Just get getting heavier. No, my body is heavy. He knows his Pokemon are feeling it too. They toss away the Farfetch and the young man. Gold saying, what are you? The Farfetch and the young man rise to their feet, being possessed by a ghastly. Gold says, ghastly. Ghastly made them heavy. Man, this author really loves using this trick with Ghastly. The young man at Ghastly's command launches his far-fetched forward, flapping Apom in the face. Gold calls out, hey, Abo, you can't fight them now. Get out. He picks up his Apom and runs, telling his other Pokemon fast. They race through. They hide behind a nearby shrine. Gold peeks out, thinking, great, now we're even 
deeper in the forest. Now what? Not for any Pokemon battle, but not if they're being manipulated by Ghastly. Gold is in shock, noticing that his Poliwag fell behind and is trying to find him. Gold thinks, Poliwag, when do we get separated? Poliwag, over here, he calls out. But as he scoops up Poliwag, he's suddenly surrounded by Ghastly, a Houndor, a Ariados, yep, Ariados, and a Deli Bird, all seemingly possessed. Gold brings out his new, his Pokedex set. Thinking newcomers, Delibird, Ghastly, Ariados, Houndor, all different types. This is gonna be tough. The Houndor launches at him. As Gold says, Yeah, Houndor's bite, huh? And how about Expo? Smoke screen. And Cynical does just that. Ghastly, though, is moving in on Poliwag. As Gold says, Poliwag, watch out. But this distraction allows Houndor to attack his Cynical. As Gold says, Oh no, Expo. Golden says to his, um, Sunkern, <laughs> There we go. Not used to that Pokemon, even though I played the game that it was from very religiously. He tells the Sunkern, Come on, Sunbo, grow. But because he's addressing Sunkern, Apom is being attacked by Delibird. Gold turns saying, What? But this distraction allows Ariados to attack, attack his Sunkern. Gold calls out, Sunbo, my commands aren't fast enough. As all the other Pokemon start to move in, Gold says, it's the same four against four, but I'm so much slower with my commands. This is my first group battle. Just haven't gotten into the groove. Golden notices a figure moving in the mist. He says, another one. Gotta hit it first. Expo, Ember, and Cyndaquil does just that. But Houndor jumps in the way, t blocking the hit. A voice calls out Flamethrower, and Houndor unleashes that against Cyndaquil, shockingly enough having a bit of an effect. And Cyndaquil falls and falls hard. As Gold moves into Cyndaquil, calling out Expo, the unknown figure moves in and tells Gold, stay away. Gold questions, what? And a figure flagged by his Pokemon, this masked man says, stay away from the forest. To be continued. Okay, not a bad little adventure. We're actually starting to see some of the gym leaders too, which is actually pretty cool. And to see Faulkner and Bugsy, and even meeting Kurt in a situation that's less aggravating than in the anime, where Ash just hands over the GS ball and that's it. Hey, I, I get the changes that were made, but they shouldn't have been made. It's just like, guys, come on. You needed to follow that plot line through. It would have been a great payoff. Ugh, can't wait to see how they do the Pokemon egg. And with this masked person, unfortunately, I already know who the masked person is. <laughs> I, I, that, that was spoiled for me a long time ago. What I don't know is the why. That is lost on me. I have no idea why he's doing what he's doing. Why he's operating the way he's operating. It's just interesting. Why did they choose him for all of this? That's what I'm interested to see. But Gold has really grown in a lot of situations. His interactions with Silver continue to be my favorite moment. Silver by himself is cool, but Gold and Silver, when they're together, that is when the best stuff in this manga happens. But again, like I said before, Usually when red was interacting with green or blue, that's when the magic happened. But I'm still interested to see because we've only seen the sprinklings of Team Rocket. You know, they're up to their usual mischief. It's just like, yeah, a bunch of leaderless jobbers rushing around. But here, they seem to have a new leader, which wasn't the case in the game. At least, not to my memory. So I'm curious to know how this new leader factors in. A very cold and ruthless person indeed. But I'm also interested to see how Silver plays into all of this too. Hmm, this is this will be fun though. This will be fun. Yeah, you know, we're getting it. We're gonna start getting into like the really cool story elements too, and the really cool Pokemon traits too. Not to say that Faulkner and Bugsy aren't great. I prefer Faulkner more than Bugsy, but they aren't the best, of the best when it comes to Johto, at least from my perspective. Hmm, it's how how those game elements are gonna come into play. That that's gonna be the thing that really kind of pushes me over the edge when it comes to a lot of this stuff so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below like comment subscribe if you enjoyed the ride thank you so much for watching and until next time i've been news this din and i hope to see you later till then take care Bye bye